Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and welcome to Fixing the Money Thing. Boy, do we have a lot of great things to talk about today. And we have really a story that's just amazing. And we have Drenda with us today. Hey, great Drenda, to be with you today. Great to be together and yes, talk yes, I'm about so excited life. about your new book, Your Financial Revolution: The Power of Provision. Yes, it's yes. a great book. And you went back and you gave some background to help reestablish people who've never heard your kingdom teaching, which I think is the best mm. anywhere. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. I know it did change our life, so yes, it we did. know it uh, it works. And uh, we want to encourage uh, those that are that are watching today. That to get a piece of paper because we're going to give you some keys to unlock your provision. In fact, the title of the book, The Power of Provision, isn't just a saying. It just isn't a nice little title. We discovered the power of provision. We did. I mean, what, nine years, we lived in serious debt. Yes. We had I mean, collectors calling. We were living in an 1800s farmhouse. We could hardly put any money toward gasoline. I, sometimes we just put a dollar's worth in the car. I remember doing a dollar yes. here and a dollar there. And it was a tough time. It looked like, hey, we love God, but where are you, Lord, in our finances? And I know some people feel that way. It's like, God, yes. are you there? Where, where is the provision that your word uh, talks about? We had that question because uh, as believers, we were serious about God. We loved God. We loved going to church. We were involved with church. I love the anointing. I already had an Old Testament degree. I had a Bible, a year of Bible school. And yet what we saw in the Bible wasn't happening in our life. Mm -hmm. And you, you came to me one day, I'll never forget in the farmhouse as we were in our struggle and things just didn't look like they were working. I remember you coming and saying, Drenna, I'm sorry, God, show me that I haven't trusted in him, that I, I don't know how his kingdom works. Well, that didn't happen by accident. That was after the, bio, the bills piled up phone calls, judgments, liens, IRS liens, every credit card canceled, uh, everything broken and no money in the house and creditors calling us every day. And finally, they got fed up with me answering the same way. Well, I'll try to get that to you. And he said, okay, that's it. We're filing a lawsuit against you. You got to have the money here in three days or that's it. But when that attorney called, I went upstairs to our little bedroom in that farmhouse and I cried out to God. I mean, I just like, I have no clue. And he spoke to me and said, you're in this mess because you've never learned how my kingdom operates. That phrase, I didn't have clarity with that. What, is, what does he mean, I don't know how his kingdom operates? Well, I remember when we, when we prayed that prayer you just mentioned, I, we, we prayed, God, you got to show us, because I didn't have a clue when I came to you and said that. Mm -hmm. I said, God, you got to show us. What do you mean? Your, and he, your did. he did. He did begin to... Um, unpack, if you will, I saw, began to see things different in the Bible. But the very first thing that happened, that attorney that called was calling because we were late uh, on our um, visa bill, whatever it was, some kind of a loan, uh, about $1,900. And three days, okay, $1,900 back then was like a million dollars. It was. I, <laughs> I mean, the refrigerator's empty. I mean, we have our own business. There's nothing in the pipeline to produce that in three days. And, um, you know, what am I going to do, right? Well, we were in uh, sales and driving to clients' homes and talking to them about finances. And that, that next night, we had three days to get the money there, driving to a client's house, talk to him, you know, and the, t tell us about the cars. They want to hear about the cars we drove. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had an old caravan, and it smoked whenever you drove it. Yep. And uh, sometimes it didn't shut off when you turned it off. So it would kind of sputter and yeah. make some well, noise afterwards. Smoke is a very and polite word. Smoke and, uh, but, you know, when you've got a small family, old kids, we've got a, we needed a van to be able to carry them around. And uh, it was old, and it was a lot of miles on it. And it yeah. needed fixed. It needed replaced, actually, but we didn't have the money to even fix it. Yeah. And now we've got these visa, you know, that debt's due and it's due in a few days. I knew I was at church that night and I got a call from you and you shared with me what happened to that old van. And I know you well, also had a Peugeot. We had two vehicles. Yeah, we had two, two we had wonderful old, cars. Old Peugeot and the frame was bent. <laughs> yeah, right. So when we went down the road, it looked like we were turning because the frame was bent on this car. Yeah, so so we that, were... was, that was our... There are two vehicles. The one was your business vehicle, the one that went down the road crooked, yeah, yeah. and then we right. had the caravan. So. so that's why we weren't really advertising them right. by parking right. them in front of my client's house. But I remember We'd you calling me. We'd always park them around the corner. Yeah, and you were like, Drenda, you'll never forget, you'll never believe what happened tonight. You yes. Know? So I drove that old van to a client's house, and afterwards, 
I was leaving his house, and of course, it, you said smoke, which is very polite. It bellowed at smoke. It fills, it fills the yard. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to turn it on in front of this client, so I parked around the corner, but he followed me. And I got to the car and had to start it, and then he turned it off. Of course, that's what he'd say. He's going to be fumigated if he didn't. I mean, it was just bad. It was bad. I'm just kidding. But he, was, he said, he did this. He said, turn it off. Turn it off. He comes up, open the hood, he said. So he looks in the hood. He says, I'm a mechanic, he said. I, I have my own business on the side. So he said, you got a busted head gasket. Drive it home and fix it. Well, I, I, we've, we've had the head gasket repaired on that before. We knew it was about an $800 job or a $1,000 job. I didn't, we didn't have any money. So driving home back to the office, which is about six miles or so, I noticed this bubble on the hood. I, I thought I saw a little spot on the hood I, I'd never seen before. And as I looked at it, I thought, is that thing getting bigger? And it slowly, it was getting bigger. And I thought, something's going on under that hood, you know? But what happened was, as I was driving it, thinking of the money, before this bubble showed up, I said, out loud, I said, God, what am I going to do with this van? Maybe it's better if it just burned up and the insurance pays it off. And I said, I'm just tired of this thing. The things we say when we're <laughs> disgusted and busted, right? <laughs> yeah, that wasn't a faith prayer. But when I said that, I looked down, that's how I saw that bubble. So I got to the office and pulled in there. And as I was pulling into the office, the front end just burst. I mean, just bellowed flames about six foot off that hood. The whole thing just burned up. And I'll never forget that. You know, I sat there thinking, I mean, I was kind of in shock. Like, what happened? I just said that. I mean, what happened? Right. And it, it just burned up. And now, Moses had a burning bush. You had a burning yeah, van. Yeah, I had a burning van. And two, two blocks down the street was the fire department. Yeah, two blocks. You literally ran on well, foot. Well, no, no, right? I, I correct that. Not two blocks, two houses. <laughs> okay. Down, it's the same street, just two right. houses down the street. So I call them, and they don't come. And you, you know? ran down there, didn't you, to go get them? Well, I started to, <laughs> and they, they come, you know, as one of those volunteer fire departments, and so right. here they come. And I can remember the captain comes up to me and puts his arm around me and says, man, I'm sorry about your van, but I was thinking, praise God, this thing is burned up, you know, but I was afraid he thought I would, I did it, you know, but I didn't. <laughs> but anyway, long story short, the van was totaled. They gave us the check. We paid that attorney's bill within three days mm -hmm. and an amazing story, but that caught my attention. Right. They, I, we prayed, God teach us how the kingdom operates. Was that a result of something that I said? I remember thinking, I said that. Mm -hmm. And so God began to kind of we curiously began to see things happen, and he began to show us right. why things happened. Right, and then we needed a vehicle because now we paid off the debt that was due, but we now don't no longer had a vehicle. Yeah, I remember and how, that evening. how God provided that, and all these different things he started showing us about his word and his kingdom, and the principles that you include in your book. Yes. The, your financial revolution, the power of provision. And we want to help people go on their own financial revolution because we went on to get out of debt, Yes. and pay off all of our debt, then to save cash, and our business went on to prosper. Uh, uh, yeah, everything miracles, changed. Miracles, big, big things started happening. Right. But there were some principles that you grabbed a hold of and we began to learn as a family, and uh, those, were, those were the things that changed everything. Everything. You know, we're not that good. We weren't that good. No. But, you know, as you said, we began to prosper, build our dream home, pay cash for our cars, uh, now having the ability at that time to, to start giving thousands or hundreds of thousands away mm -hmm. to projects. I mean, folks, you've got to understand, it's like nine years we lived like that. Nine years, and now all of a sudden we're tapping into this new realm of uh, expectation and understanding mm -hmm. where it's just prospering and paying all the debt off, being totally debt-free. It's just, it was amazing. When we come back, I want to talk more about the actual principles that God showed us and kind of help you understand that it wasn't us. There were keys that we tapped right. into that anyone can tap into when we come back. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.